Social Talk, hanging out here in the Momofuku Co. PDR, beautiful artwork, hanging out with Chef Esther. What's up, Chef? How you doing? Hi, good. Good. Fuck yeah. So your first podcast ever. First podcast ever. Amazing. Amazing. So don't you worry, relax, and uh, I'll take you through it, okay? <laughs> first of all, what is this art? This, it's David Cho. Okay. Um, so, yeah, he's like very good friends with Dave Chang. Yeah. Um, his artwork is all around the restaurant. I mean, he probably saw it on the way in. On I the, did, yeah. On the, the right-hand side. That's cool. So yeah. um, do you have a part in sort of this kind of thing, or is it no, just like... No, this has been here since we opened up this location. Understood. Yeah. Understood. Okay, very cool, very cool. Well, you know, you're CDC at, uh, at Co. right now, but uh, we're t- going to take it all the way back to when you were a little child. Uh, where were you born? Yonkers. Oh, dope. Hell yeah. <laughs> New York, yeah. What did your parents do? Uh, my mom was a banker at the time. My dad had a dry cleaners. Very okay. Very immigrant. Got yeah, you. Background. Yeah. Were you always there working? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the dry cleaners. <laughs> That's usually yeah. the way I'm it very goes. good at bagging clothes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, I was talking to Chef Colby down at Audrey, and he was like, I used to have to serve sodas at my parents' restaurant, at my family's restaurant. I'm like, yeah, that's the way it is. You know, when your family has a business, you work there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Um, what were the sort of the interests you had when growing up? Sports? Anything like that? Um, I'm a golfer. I started golfing when I was like 12, 13. Really? Golf through, yeah. Golf what got you into that? <laughs> Honestly, my my parents are very Korean. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was going into high school with no sports really in my in my like back pocket. Yeah. For, like college, um, they're like, you need to start something. Yeah. No one will compete with you if you're <laughs> golf. Like you'll have no competition. Yeah. They're like really trying to get you to. Yeah. So I yeah I went to I went to Korea for three months before high school. Yeah. Had like a crash course on golf. Really. Did yeah it was very intense. It's a huge thing um, over there, then. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put my child through it in the future, but it was, it was good. It was good for what it was. Um, it was basically like all the kids in Korea who were trying to go pro. Okay. So what they would do is kids my age, they're like 14, 15 years old, um, would go to school, like sign in for the day, and then yeah. go to this like training facility, and then you would just practice all day long. So just like boot camp. Yeah, like we we used to wake up at like five in the morning to go and like like 10 mile runs damn and then would yeah have breakfast go stretch for an hour and then just like hit a thousand balls and you had to finish a thousand or else you couldn't go that it was like it was like military camp yeah a thousand balls oh my yeah. god so you probably hit over ten thousand balls yeah probably easy. Yeah, yeah okay very cool very but, cool so you didn't turn pro i didn't turn pro okay um, yeah what, I what happened there <laughs> I, I played i played in high school i played in college um and then i started cooking Okay, cool. Uh, what brought you into the, the restaurant world? Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I have a different trajectory than a lot of people. Okay. Um, I went to college. I was getting... I got my, my degree in psychology. Okay. Um, and I was trying to like look at what I wanted to do with my future. Yes. Um, and I've always loved food. Food's always been like a comfort mm-hmm. for me. Um, and when I was doing my thesis, I was trying to figure out Because when people think of food and, like, psychology, they always think of it as a negative connotation, right? Like, you think of, like, food as a coping mechanism. True. um, That always turns out to be this bad thing, whether it's, like, you don't eat or you eat too much. Yeah. Um, So I was trying to navigate that fine line and, like, try to find, like, food therapy between, like, like, uh, migrant or, like, minority communities. Yeah. Um, Because that's, like, an underlying, like, everyone eats. So yeah. how do you take a common denominator and use that as, like, the foundation to heal Yeah, is what I was going for. Um, and then I was, I don't is know. Is there anybody even doing that? I don't, I, I don't know. Um, but I was trying to do all these, like, research projects and yeah. grants and X, Y, and Z. And it, none of, at the end of the day, um, none of them worked out. So I was like, okay, okay let's, go to, let's go home. Let's go back to the East Coast. Yeah. Maybe I'll go to culinary school, like, six-month program. Yeah. So I can get into food journalism. Heard. Um, I ended up going to the ICC because it's quick. Yeah. Started cooking, and I was like, I think I'm actually pretty good at this. And then 
the the career counselor there was basically like if you ever want to write you need to work in a kitchen like you need some sort of credential exactly to to do it yeah. um, otherwise no one's gonna listen to you like why would somebody listen to you that hasn't been through any of exactly it? so it's like okay that's fair um and then from there i just kind of kept going like uh yeah i applied for an externship in Norway because it was just like available and I was like I'm gonna do this <laughs> so my first kitchen job was in Oslo which is beyond me like I, yeah, I don't know that why is crazy. I did that yeah. um, I did that for a month and I was like this is terrible because yeah. I don't know how to cook I don't know I don't know their language I don't know their culture yeah their food is completely different. What was the kitchen? What restaurant? Uh, it's called Restaurant Fauna okay they had one star like that they've closed since then uh huh um but the food was incredible. I, mm-hmm. It was also like a restaurant model that I've never seen again. Like, um, I guess, I mean, all over Europe, they work long hours, right? Yes, like, yeah. that's just yeah. your lifestyle. So we'd go in at like nine in the morning. Um, all their linens you washed in the basement. So like Gar- Garmo, Garmo and dessert pastry were the same station. You would send out your, your like canapes and then Garmo would run downstairs and do the laundry okay and you just be down there while the rest of service is happening and they call you back up when it's time for it like right before pre-dessert <laughs> and you just be down That's there crazy taking shifts like yeah. wringing out like your like side towels yeah. aprons hanging them up doing the batches it was i don't know it was kind of nice it's pretty dope yeah 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 nice little break you learn from... a lot um in terms of like whole like operation yeah. standpoint, I think like very early on too. And it's that. uh it's also a good camaraderie thing because whoever you're folding with, yeah. you're gonna you know yeah, eventually exactly. talk to mm-hmm. you know you're like in it together. Cool. So uh, I'm gonna backtrack a little bit. Uh, where'd you go to college? Uh, Pitzer in oh, California. Okay, understood. Uh, what made you choose that? Living on the East Coast, that's a big jump. Uh, golf. Okay, I went golf and golf. Gotcha. Yeah, they were um they're. Division three, but their women's program was just starting back up after like a ten year hiatus. Really? Um, so there was a handful of us, handful of us that, uh, yeah, there was like five or six of us that were gonna go back and start it back up. Okay, so you go to California, you do your college thing. Yeah. At this point, are you working? Like working, like jobs, like. Uh, just just at college, like work study. Okay, do, understood. Like, so you weren't cooking. Stuff. No, no, I wasn't okay, cooking. Gotcha. Okay, okay. Cooking, yeah. Cooking didn't happen until culinary school. Mm-hmm. Did you ever cook at home? All the time. Okay, understood. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, when you were growing up, your parents, did they, they cook? Uh, my dad out? cooked. Okay. Um, yeah, my mom's not much of a cook. Yeah. She'll like, it's, she's like the type where she's good at what she knows. Yeah. And it like sustains us. <laughs> yeah, I get that. You know, like it's all about like nourishment for her. Yeah. It's not necessarily about like flavor and like, mm, let's got like you. Okay. put a bit more seasoning in here. It's yeah. not like that. My dad was always the one that was like, mm, let's add more salt. Okay. Mm, Your dad was trying to, to bit trying to enjoy himself. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Very cool. So after your, is a one month intern you said? Yeah. Okay. After that, what, what's your plan? Uh, I started at Cafe Balloon. Okay. Did you know, did you have any other choices other than that or did you? So I had applied, uh, I had applied to Co. Uh Uh-huh. Um, straight out of culinary school. But it was like that whole, you apply to like the corporate website, you may or may not hear back. Yeah. But, um, I don't know. Yeah. Me being me, I took it very personally. I was like, of course you do. They don't, they don't want me. I'm not experienced enough. Like. Um, I'm nothing. So then I was like, okay, let me find some place that's more like a school. I'm nothing. God damn. That's I know. I, always, I, always, I don't know. I was like, hmm. <laughs> that's rough, to, bro. Like, more reason to like learn. I yeah. Guess. Um, so then, yeah, Cafe Balloon just popped up. Yeah. It was like, I mean, yeah, it still is considered like the school for a lot of these chefs, right? Like, um, the epicenter for all that talent during that decade. So I was like, let's go there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was there for like two and a half years. Two and a half years. Okay. So Cafe Balud, what was your first job? What was your first station? Uh, Garmanger. Garmanger. A.M. Yeah. Got you. And that's a pretty big restaurant, huh? Uh. Like in terms of numbers? Yeah, we used to do like uh, what was it? Like for lunch, 
it would be anywhere from like 80 to like 120 yeah for dinner we used to do like 250 that's I think. a lot i mean yeah. for the kind of cuisine that it was yeah yeah, yeah. it was um, a lot of fun do you uh, still keep in contact with any cooks chefs that you worked with while you were at oh, daniel yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah very cool yeah um any notable any any chefs you want to shout out um, I think I don't. There's there's so many. Yeah. Um, so you were working with like the all star cast. Was it the all? Uh, to me, they were the all star stuff. Yeah, um, for sure. Cast. Um, I don't know. We kind of just like formed this big family. Yeah. We were working crazy hours. Yeah. It was that time where like you were expected to come in two hours before. Yeah. Your shift, you know. Yeah, for sure. Um, and if you weren't. You just got we ridiculed were, by all yeah. the other cooks. <laughs> yeah, everyone. It's like, what shit. are you a bitch? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, why aren't you set up? Yeah, exactly. Um, because you didn't show up early. Yeah, yeah. I get um, that. And then you go out all night till four a.m. and then go back. Yeah, <laughs> it's. Yeah. I've never lived in a city that's open till four a.m., so I don't know that lifestyle. But I definitely stayed up till that time too. You know, just in neighborhood houses and stuff, like cooks' houses right, and things yeah. like that. So it uh, must have been a cool kind of experience to be out that late. And honestly, the best networking happens over After beers. Hours. Yeah, yeah 100%. 100%. Um, so two and a half years at Danielle, what station did you leave? Uh, I left as a tornado. You left as a tornado. Okay, got you. So you were working everything. Mm-hmm. You ever work with Howard Coe? Mm-mm. Hmm? I think he, he, like, I he was there at some point. Um, cool. So where'd you go after that? I came here. Okay. Got you. So you were like, finally, I'm here. Yeah. Well, we were trying to figure out um, my chef at the time. I had, I had trailed around at a bunch of different places um, on my days off just because I was curious to see what was around. And then when it came time to like, I went up to Aaron. Um, Aaron Bluderin was my chef at cafe. But I went up to Aaron and I was like, hey, like I think I'm, I think I'm like thinking and considering leaving and moving on. And he was like, Esther, like complete support. Like, where do you want to go? Yeah. And the first place I could think of was, I'm going to try Co again. Yeah. Um, so he shot Sean an email. Um, and then I stopped in with my resume and just like handed it off to, I think I walked in and like Sean was here, Max was here, Dave yeah. was here at the time. Um, yeah, I handed my resume in. I got a trail the following week. Yeah. And then. <laughs> And then I told, uh, Sean offered me a position, and then I told him that I had given eight months' notice at Cafe, so I'd see him in eight months. <laughs> wow! Eight months' notice? I, yeah. Damn! I, 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 I couldn't leave them. Like, they were, they were short-staffed. Yeah, I yeah. I felt the need to replace myself, and I was like, I need this amount of time. I need to get them through the holiday season. Did they understand? Because yeah. eight months is fucking... Yeah, yeah well, time. Sean was like, actually, that might line up perfectly, because we have a visa, um... Visa hire, whose visa is going to expire in around six months. Yeah. So you guys can overlap a little bit or not. Um, he was like, just just reach back out when you're ready. Yeah. For the job, and I was like, okay, that works out perfectly. Whoa. Okay. Huh. So when you come in after the eight months, um, are you like fucking excited to be in here after so long? Oh yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like so nervous. Yeah. <laughs> it had been kind of so right before I started here it was 2017 I had uh, I had just gone to the Boku's door um, when Matt Peters won gold yeah and it was like this like I was riding this high after that like, yeah this is incredible like seeing seeing like chefs be able to do something like the Olympics and be celebrated for it yeah and yeah acknowledged for exactly it. And I was like whoa this is insane how'd you get picked for that uh, I did the mentor at BKB. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And my chef and I came in second, so we were like, oh, um, the prize for it was to go to the Boku's door. Very cool. Yeah, How, what's that experience like? Uh, Boku's door. Is that like like what what? Yeah, how long are the days? Like, it's insane. Um, I mean, do you know the menu ahead of time? Do you plan it? Do you I have? Didn't, it? I didn't compete in the Boku's. Okay. Um, we just went and supported. You went and supported. Yeah. Got you. Uh, I imagine they're very long days. Yeah, I don't know. 100%. I don't know the full details behind yeah. all that. That's, I mean, just watching it online is crazy. I it's, see. It's insane food. Yeah, it's food it like, really is. It's like a different part of the brain that you have to like. Yeah. Really. There was these noodles that I saw the other day on Tessier's IG that were like donuts. It was like the filling was in a ring instead of in the middle. That's crazy. And I was like, "Fucking assholes! Yeah. You're so good at this, mm-hmm. you know." That's cool. So after you 
come back, you're riding high, you come in here. Um, are you pretty confident in your skill at that at that point? Or I are you still I like okay, you thought okay. I thought I was I was very confident at Cafe. Uh huh. I left like feeling like I could teach like Mike like I could teach and like Yeah.